Uh, question, Andrea, do you have things that you want to promote like that you're doing in New York this week? I mean, we have our event, but it's already sold out. So. Oh, come on. <laughs> I got tickets. Thank when, you, Kevin. When is it? I'm, it's I'm literally tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> it's tomorrow. Shit, I'm going to a Broadway show tomorrow. When? When? What time is it? It's and where from is it? eight to ten. It's um at Pop Up Grocer. Mm, I most, miss a Pop Up Grocer. The most awaited collaboration of 2023. Oh, God damn! How, I always miss your events. I legitimately it, like consistently. Uh, actually, no. I went to the one uh, at Pearl Fisher. I, but that was like our birthday celebration. But this one is like <laughs> this is like a spoof of sommelier col- like culture. So it's okay. like literally come and get your certification as an official snack sommelier. And we're gonna have like like wines paired to mm. like, and I'm like crossing my fingers that these monocles that I ordered actually make <laughs> it. So it's gonna be like monocles and like these like white gloves that butlers use. And I Fancy. bought myself a top hat, and I hope it really <laughs> makes it because I'm super excited to be like living my best Monopoly man dreams. Yo, <laughs> yo, you always have such in depth <laughs> concepts, elaborate schemes for your events. You're like, well, we're gonna do a seance, and uh, we're all gonna pray <laughs> to bring back purple ketchup. It's like, <laughs> like can, can people just... are still wanting to do that again, and I'm like, I honestly think we yeah. invoked something, so I don't want to. Yeah, play. yeah, one time only. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to mistakenly. Uh, uh, get a mm-hmm. demon on you <laughs> wait I, speaking of that there's this podcast that i loved about like supernatural stuff and they had this episode last week about people watching goop oh yeah and yeah. accidentally good, like good fucking podcast i love that podcast oh, yeah, that's kind of yeah, I, yeah i love other ones. that's like his favorite show it was so funny because like i'm like that's my my kind of content like <laughs> invoking a demon by doing like watching goop it's like, yeah 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 invoke the demon of ronald mcdonald <laughs> Two, one. Kevin. What's up, buddy? What's up, dude? <laughs> what do you do? You just have to look away? No, I just had to clear my throat. Oh, okay, cool. I know, I'm trying not to do it in the mic. You're ready to rock. Yeah. You have an off-brand center merchandise yeah. uh, on today. I like that. Yeah, chill. That's just a, that's a sample that doesn't say anything but chill. I mean, it's a cool penguin on the back. But I also like this hat. What hat is this? Uh, it's some Hawaiian League Wales team. I don't know. Found it online. Kevin's on a fucking hat heater yeah he just buys a hat every day and uh, not every he's, day he's now i've uh, slowed collecting down. my and... bank my bank account told me to slow my roll <laughs> well uh kevin i want to talk about your hats and your shirts and everything else but we have a very 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 special guest today uh maybe our favorite guest uh, i don't know if i could say that uh without offending all the other guests <laughs> but this is uh her third time on the pod three peat uh it is the uh the oracle of food and beverage the cult leader of the snacks verse your favorite snack writer's favorite snack writer, the one and only snacks insider. It's Andrea Hernandez. <laughs> All right. Welcome Hello. back. Oh my God. I'm so excited to be here. Long time no see. <laughs> you look amazing. Oh, uh, thank you. Yeah. You you look like you're ready to drop bombs. Yeah. She's, she went Hollywood <laughs> <a> big time. <laughs> she's so Hollywood. Yeah. That's why we're wearing our sunglasses inside. It's mostly because Andrea is so Hollywood. Uh, what brings you to New York? Um. Well, I'm actually here for an event um, with Pop Up Grocer. That's actually tomorrow, but I'm actually also doing a guest lecture at Cornell. Whoa! Oh, shit. Yeah. Teaching the kids about snacks. Teaching, actually, teaching the food scientists at the food science Whoa. about snacks. I, I know, right? They got a ball and ass food science uh, school up there. I know. Like, it's so funny. That's I'm like, big time. the fact that these like scientists like love Snackshot, and I can just imagine <laughs> them like looking through the memes and just being like, I don't know what the fuck this is. No like, offense, but could you ask them to, you know, maybe get these snacks to taste a little better? Yeah. Well, that's literally what we're gonna be like kind they're gonna give me a whole tour about like how they like do the tastings and stuff like all that sensorial stuff that they do and it's so funny because it's like so scientific and they actually <clears throat> showed it to me like on zoom when we were like going over on a zoom call but i just find it so funny that these like phd candidates <laughs> like are obsessed with snackshot and they think that i can actually teach them something <laughs> Well, you can. I mean, I'm going to say you always talk about how snacks are a signal. I'm going to tell you that snack shot as a signal because you've been on our podcast now (laughs) for like two years. We were up on it first and now you're doing Cornell lectures. (laughs) Oh, no, shit. You know, so. (laughs) Like uh, Kim Kardashian. (laughs) 
yeah, next time she's gonna come in in just like a gold robe and like just like nothing but like Gucci. Uh, it's only a matter of time until you know? so you're speaking at Harvard Business School. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're gonna be like, oh, we gotta talk to Andrea's assistant's assistant yeah. to try to try to get her back on. Yeah, the you pot. better not big time us. <laughs> well, it's so funny because like since the last time we, I was here, like I've actually expanded. I actually have one one intern now. <laughs> oh, let's go. Let's go. Like- Team has doubled in size. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so funny because like now people circumvent me when I like don't like have a response for them or like like they're trying to like get me to try their samples whatever and it's like they've discovered her and like they go and like she has to like talk to me and be like oh I got this and I'm like oh god they're circumventing me and going straight to the intern trying to get in that way it's oh so man funny. that's great though that's what that's that's, <laughs> that's that's what people do to me yeah that's what they do to Kevin and to Pete here they're like oh I don't want to go to Alex he'll say no but if I go to other people they'll say yes but no that's amazing and congrats I know you've always talked about sort of building a team and building out uh, yeah. snacks verse and building out all these you know kind of amazing 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 things you're working on you work nonstop. I feel like you travel all around the globe oh all the God, time yeah. and uh yeah you're absolutely doing it and I'm sure this is uh you know only going to continue yeah. um and also I would say you know you know you've made it when you have a big time knockoff which is uh <laughs> something that you have here how mad are you at the snacks insider account on twitter that um appears to be doing uh their best <laughs> their worst their Im- worst uh <laughs> imitation of yeah. snack shot putting out the hottest pile of dog shit for content you can wow. even imagine wow. Wow. people wow. are like "Ooh, the greatest uh you know form of flattery and it's like oh my god shut the fuck up like the greatest form of flatter- flattery to me is like monetizing money you know yeah. money. pay me bitch pay me. Yeah, yeah yeah well what's kind of like upsetting with this like they, they were called mondelez insider and they recently like changed it to snack insider which is like literally snax with an x know. yeah i think yeah. that's the part that like is the most I, frustrating well, or to crazy me, to me to me it's just been very frustrating because obviously there's like a bunch of people mondelez subscribed to snack shot um and then also i've had conversations with various people from their team particularly from their marketing team so it just feels kind of like a big you know like fuck you yeah i'm like you could have really worked with us like in the better way and so like you know um i just hope that they just like you know implode with the cringe content (laughs) i mean they're doing a really good job on that (laughs) did you hear that some sour patch kids have been spotted together or um yeah fucking wheat triscuits are doing some bullshit (laughs) yeah for those that don't know mondelez is a mega corporation who owns oreo ritz philadelphia cream cheese uh sour patch kids tates and to be very clear they're a really great company and we would love to work with them if they're listening um so kevin uh but you got all that stuff you gotta pay Andrea the, first. Uh, the stuff. <laughs> but no they created a twitter account called snacks insider s-n-a-x insider which couldn't be more like snack shot if it tried and they're posting basically like press releases from their own pr company <laughs> and pr team about their own brands which is like sort of feels like it's like fake gossip girl thing it's just like it's it's, it's everything that you do but generally like the the sort of uh, on a much yeah. lower <laughs> yeah. quality the bizarro version <laughs> and it's like yeah it's an insider because you're inside of the company yeah. like we see what you're doing yeah that's also you don't get paid from the brands that you promote exactly and that's the whole yeah. point is like you're there because you're a fan and because you love the culture of it all and you, <laughs> it's not because they're you're an insider in a company yeah it's it's definitely something that i was just like wow like uh that's well it you know to me it was just also kind of like wow that's literally me disrupting a fucking industry like the way that you know they go about like even doing their own press releases but you know it's just super cringe um you know f you to the Mondelez marketing team for <laughs> you know really doing that um and going there andrea's words do not reflect center design studio <laughs> lc um because i believe that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery that's what i uh, say okay yeah. this is where we cut and i, <laughs> I stand up and i leave <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah well oscar oscar wilde famously said that and he's an idiot we all know that he's a fucking moron who the fuck is oscar wilde <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. what has he ever done and also Did he I, write that book into I, the wild <laughs> I looked it up. He died in 1900. So the dude's been dead for so many fucking years. He doesn't know anything about intellectual property or sort of, uh, regi- you know, sort of registration or sort of copyright. All these things that, like, you know, have advanced. He never far. had a meme literally stolen from no. him. He doesn't even know what memes are. Yeah. Oscar Wilde. The silver lining here is their content is horrible. Um, <laughs> well, the- and it's like in no. 
it's not even in the same atmosphere as what you do. So, as the great philosopher Kim Kardashian once said, they can steal your recipe, but the sauce won't taste the same. That's what <laughs> okay. Kim said. They're not even doing the same recipe. <laughs> I mean, they're trying, but they're not doing it. But um, yeah, moving on. <laughs> uh, uh, have we had peak beverage yet, Andrea? We hit peak beverage uh, like three years ago. Like literally, snack shots started to you mean, discuss. You that. mean three weeks ago? Because the Bon Appetit <laughs> our article just came out then. <laughs> Don't worry. They're gonna come out with another one in about six months, six years. We're, I'm still, we're still, we're so close, but we're, we haven't hit peak beverage yet. We're, we're right on our way. I don't know. The moment I saw Palo Santo being like literally as an RTD, like Palo Santo water, I'm like, mm, we, we may be getting there. You know, <laughs> no, we're, like we're, we're just, we're getting so much, so closer. Right? What are the uh, neurological benefits of Palo Santo? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. my god, it's so funny because like you literally look it up and it's like uh, brewed and like using a, I don't know what type of pink quartz crystal like yeah. you know meditating on the number seven like it's stupid like but but that's literally the, their description of, of functionality there's there's also like um this brand called days that says they uh their functionality is um spiritual uplift mm. oh hell yeah i actually asked the rabbi about that i'm like you know, is this something that spiritual leaders should be concerned that beverages are now doing? Yeah. <laughs> like- Palo Santo yeah, welcomes uh, Palo Santo water, peace, luck, health, <laughs> harmony, and positivity. I think we all could use some of that. That sounds right. really good to me. <laughs> I'd like to monetize those things. Oh, uh, the packaging is also incredible. Palo Santo, yeah. Do you think I- it tastes like incense? It better. But that's what I'm saying. Like, like what does that even taste like? Like burnt Santa Barbara, water? like a hippie store. Wellness. It tastes like wellness. Yeah. So I would say we're close, very close. What we're happens? Close. When, what happens when we uh, go over yeah, beverage? Yeah. What, what are the repercussions? <laughs> I think you can start to see the counter movement already, where uh, you know it's like uh, reject modernity, embrace tradition. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna go back to the surge. Water. Yeah. Like the sink. <laughs> that's what we do we no go i back think we're to gonna go back to like the hubba bubba rtds like really shitty i think we're going we're, we're closely approaching that kind of reversal of the last you awesome. know, 30 years yeah i'm actually rooting for it to be honest yeah that was something that we were just talking about before uh we were recording like you were talking about sort of how gen alpha is starting to reject technology a bit they're starting to reject a lot of the things that the the millennials like us and the very cool gen zers like kevin i'm not gen z <laughs> like Talk to us a little bit about like trends that you see in sort of the like gen alpha counterculture. You told me they're getting flip phones. So I guess like the Zalphas, which are like the Zalphas. Al- the Zalphas wow. are like the youngest Gen Z eldest alphas, which are turning 15. So like this generation is turning 15. The alpha ones are turning 15 in two okay. years. So like we were talking about like actual teenagers now, right? So sure. it's these kids in high school rejecting the use of technology. It's, it's called like the Ludite teen movement. And Ludite was a movement that was like anti-tech, I think in like the 1900s or like 18. Mm-hmm. 18- hundreds i don't know some some old ass time but <laughs> it's so funny to see them just like be like oh you know anti smartphones um anti like the iphone and so like they go and like have like these like disposable cameras and like literally like rejection of all the things that we we came up with like as millennials and we made like a thing and then also the, the rejection of that the goopified like better for you everything movement that I think starts with Gen with Gen Z and and now it's like you know like when you interview like kids like I've seen these reports where they're like oh what's your favorite snack like these Gen Alpha kids are like oh it's goldfish like <laughs> Got it. it's not like it's a, a better opinion. for you allergen <laughs> like allergen free it's none of these like healthy snacks it's literally just like what a 90s kid was you're telling me they don't want annie's bunnies (laughs) (laughs) you know it's so funny to see that that speaking of mondelez like those are the types of brands that they're um you know the the legacy of lunchables is well alive with gen alpha and that's a pretty big feat you know 30 years being like a staple and you saw that lunchables is actually going to become like the standard like meal in the u.s like schools no like way. That. it's probably an improvement over what they're eating at school <laughs> no those chicken patties and like those lunch things like lunchables can't 
hold a candle to those. Like just a little Ritz. <laughs> it's uh, the same thing. Probably. I think you taught me this. Was, was like uh, Lunchables were for leftovers, right? Yeah. That was like sort of. It was uh, a marketing. Like they, they literally went into like how do you market this scrap as food? And <laughs> obviously they make Ritz, right? Or that's the part. There's a partnership with Ritz. I don't. Know. I don't know, but they have like the cracker and stuff. But yeah, it did start off as like how do we make? How do we turn these scraps into mm. like a product itself? So. So that's perfect for lunch. Yeah. Uh, that's how lunches. all good things come. That's like hot dogs and <laughs> yeah, bologna. Yeah. <laughs> true. Yeah, true. mortadella. People love mortadella. That's true. <laughs> so yeah, any other emerging trends that we should be on the lookout for as uh, as as branding uh, experts and uh, oracles ourselves? Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna go through them. Um, you know. Oh, we're going through them. <laughs> oh, on the show. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's cool that kids are sort of being a little bit anti-technology because I do think technology is, is, is taken over our lives. And I do think that, yeah, it was only a matter of time before these kids were like, fuck this shit. I'm not trying to be tracked all the time by the Chinese government. And I'm just <laughs> trying to like uh, scratch, scratch that from the record. I'm like, you know, I, I, and, and try to live in a sort of a cabin in the woods and um, be one with nature. Yeah, but they'll have the an iPhone intended. at home to record their, their TikToks. And- yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's so funny because I feel like Gen Z also has that like uh, duality where it's like, you're killing the environment, Greta Thunberg, whatever. And then they'll be like, you know, posting about their shine or sheen or whatever it's called. Like yeah, those sheen. like really bad, like their hauls. Yeah. Um, and it's so funny because like I just I love Gen Z, but it's so funny how they mock millennials so much. But like I yeah. don't remember growing up making stupid ass dances. Yeah. Like, <laughs> fuck, fuck those Gen Z. Yeah, back kids. in my day, we did the Macarena. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, I'm not that old. Okay, <laughs> I'm just saying like I. It's so funny like they find us so cringe, but then I'm we are starting to see like Gen Alpha even mock the Gen Z like Hell yeah. TikToker like making stupid dances. <laughs> thing. That's the thing about life is that it always comes. <laughs> around you, yeah. and it comes at you fast and i do you know listen these gen z kids that make fun of us millennials like, <laughs> i just cannot wait for these gen alpha kids to come in and make fun of them for all the stupid shit that they do and all their fucking feelings and the therapization of life and they're like <laughs> i want to set boundaries and like all this shit when they just start making fun of you guys uh for being losers what are they going to call the next generation because uh the millennials are already yeah. beta generation yeah i don't know <laughs> I, I was making a joke like you have like two years to have a kid before the beta generation comes along because yeah, like if those... it's the alpha it's like you don't want your kid to be a beta you're literally like priming them up for i like... don't know i think it'll be an overcorrection and there'll be like a lot of gig chads <laughs> in the beta generation that's my that's my shot i'm calling yeah, yeah. they're just gonna be like robots they yeah. come out like half could be all roided up or, yeah <laughs> super jacked yeah <laughs> <laughs> they just like they all have the yeah, technology embedded in their brains. Um, yeah, well, I mean, it is interesting because I do think technology has gone to this place where like it is really starting to fuck with our brains a little bit. And I think that's maybe a good segue into the first topic, which is Jaquemus. Jaquemus is back, Kevin. Um, uh, I hey, shout out Jaquemus. Jaquemus, our favorite fashion <laughs> brand. Um, they captivated the fashion world this week with a uh, a gag worthy stunt. Uh, I don't know who wrote this uh, <clears throat> description, but basically on the streets of Paris, um, there was a sort of a, an, an army of motorized bags, uh, sort of their iconic little handbags uh, that looked like cars. And they were sort of driving up and down the block in Paris and uh, the visuals, they looked fucking super realistic. But later it was unfortunately confirmed that the massive bags were actually three dimensional renderings and it was all fake. I'm going to be completely honest. Hand up here. I absolutely thought these were real. I completely was fooled. And uh, I think this is bad because people are dumb and they should be able to tell that like there were no windows on these bags and that there were no other videos from the street or that anyone else yeah, had seen these bags exactly. except for this one video from this one angle. But neither of those thoughts ever actually fucking crossed my mind. And so I just assumed what I saw was real. I love to do like little, oh wait, I, before I share something, am I going to look ridiculous because it's <laughs> fake, right? So I immediately like went to look for like UGC, so user generated content. Sure. And I didn't see anything. And so I was like, this is 100% like a stunt, like a fake stunt thing. Okay. Um, and I highly recommend to like taking the image like for like, you know, whenever you want to make sure that something's like legit, just like grab the image, then put it on Google Images and see what what comes back. 
you know, to see like oh, whether it's search. because mm. for like the AI ones, like if you don't get anything in the beginning when it starts to go viral, like you won't see anything like pick up. Sure. So, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, it's one of those like AI generated ones. And if you see like just the same image again, you don't find any other pictures of angles so, like you, you, you have to at that point, just like, come on, like use your common sense. But those are the, the, the type of things like I've learned from like. You know, I, I have that fear of like being like the misinformation person. Like, I just feel like like I'm uh, think before you post. Um, You're asking for person. a lot. I couldn't honestly. disagree more. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, the, I'm the misinformation king. <laughs> <laughs> but also you are a news source. So yeah, I do think that's for true. you. You're yeah. like, OK, I have to make sure that what I'm putting out into the world, like, yeah, I have to do a little bit of research because you have integrity. Mm. I think the average person. <laughs> Yeah. Not to say, um, <laughs> not to use Kevin as an example here. Yeah, my ass is missing information all the time. <laughs> but like the average Never person isn't going to do that kind of research, and maybe they should. And I agree <laughs> with you. They This is a good idea is to sort of do reverse image searches or to sort of look at other <laughs> angles. But they aren't going to do that. People are just going to see something and be like, this is sick. Repost. Yeah. yeah. We should call you Miss information miss in like I, that would be like drag name <laughs> misinformation that's so funny Fuck yeah that's good kevin <laughs> yeah i i mean it's so funny because i feel like um we're so primed and i, I mean i did study communications so like i know like how these um mediums and this is by the way the more you know you know like i love that little rainbow it's like the more you know yeah like that's literally why they created the 24-hour like news cycle that was actually something that started in the 80s and it was how do you keep people kind of like engaged or hooked onto like the medium itself and that's why 24-hour news cycles sure. like were literally invented to just sell more advertising and then obviously like social media is news news feed and stuff is also primed to kind of keep you on like that doom scrolling kind of mentality so it's really like i think obviously like as a as a person who has kind of that knowledge of how like platforms themselves like work i am able to kind of just be like i i like to say like the law of minimal attention like what's on your control and what's not so like i've learned to like not fall for the triggers of you know and like have that like pause and i think a lot of people obviously because of what these platforms do it's like you're primed to like immediately react share yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. like do it for the cloud send like, it to my friend <laughs> yeah 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 and i don't know i just feel like I that's going back to the Luddite movement for Gen Alpha. I think that that they realize like, oh, it's all like we're fucking mice, you know, on like that mm. like hamster wheel, and like these kids are like, what kind of life is that? Like just literally living for the algorithm. Like, we are the product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the rejection of the algorithm mm. at the same time that like we are embracing like AI generated shit, like yeah. the Jock and Moose thing. Like I just feel like it's very it's a, a very interesting juxtaposition of like. You know, um, and one of the things that I had talked to Kevin about is also like why we're so obsessed with nostalgia, like the AI futurism and then like the obsession with nostalgia. But it's like a form of escapism from like how shitty of a present we have. Sure. If you think about it. But no, this shit rules. I, I love Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> what about that Pope, though? He looks sick. Though. Dude, the Pope I wish looks that sick. Like, if that would have been real, like, come on. But it, I knew that one was fake. I knew. I could tell from the shiny skin. What? I think his that's fit the key. Went, his fit went way too hard for that to be real. <laughs> yeah, well, my, my favorite, like, tweet was, like, what all the Brooklyn boys think, like, want to be like. I was like, that's so accurate. But Hell yeah. Absolutely. The, I mean, you're kind of looking. You, yeah, you kind of look like yeah, a dark, yeah, you're dark pope, right right now. pope you're, right you're, now. You got the black puffer on. I, I, this is my villain look, <laughs> yeah, I guess. If yeah. I was like a villainous pope, this would be like my my fit. No, but I feel like it's it's that to me that's like the the little like disappointing of it. It's like it's not real. So then it's like eh. Yeah, it's cool, but it's like, it's not fucking real. It's like, I don't know. But that. we've hit that tipping point where it is tough to tell. And I do think it's interesting that brands are going to be able to make content that tricks people and purposely does, you know, and sort of makes people question what's real and what's not. And I do think with AI getting as advanced as it is, I think it's going to be a really interesting time for marketing and for brands and for uh, all this stuff. And I, I don't know exactly how it's going to be regulated. I don't know exactly how we're going to be able to really tell because, you know, that Pope image, you're like, oh, the skin is just a little too shiny. And it's like, but like those things will be fixed by Friday. Like I that's believe. like such like that's such easy stuff for them to sort of get closer and more realistic. Yeah. Like, I mean, this I is still like, like, you know, iteration like 1.5. 1. 1. Yeah, exactly. So I feel like we're just getting so much closer to that fact where like 
I don't know if you've seen, I'm sure you, you have like those uh, TikTok trends where it's like Kanye singing other people's songs and it just sounds exactly like his voice and they're just mimicking his voice using AI. And yeah, like, I actually know shit. the guy who made that like, and that's gone viral. He started it with like a Drake thing and now he's like using it for a different... Um, his name is Nier, and yeah. he, he now it's like different um, like musicians and stuff. And yeah. I think there was a whole post in the New Yorker about that like thing that he built, where it's like, mm-hmm. you know, what is like legal in terms of like what you know what capabilities of AI and music. Um, right, because that's my voice, right? And I think if someone starts making content or starts making uh, videos or even selling things with my voice, like yeah. what are the <laughs> what are the copyright? Yeah, do and, not put yeah. our voices into AI. And yeah, do not, do, do not do that. Do not make an AI version. I do not version. consent. Yeah, that yeah. would not be cool. That would suck so bad. Do not take our voices and turn them into songs that sound anything like rap songs. No, but I mean, we've or, got enough content out there where somebody could just plug all our shit true, in. True. Yeah. Like, yeah. They'd be able to you know make, make us, her own make us say anything yeah I, they, I, could, they could do that but please do not i think that there are precedents being set so like um oh my god like it's like the nft craze last year where everything was like a fucking nft but um mm, yeah. hermes actually won the lawsuit that they did against this thing called meta birkins and like these yes. they tried to like argue like well it's not like a like it's a digital thing whatever and like they were like trying to argue that you know, they were allowed to do that or something like that. And then um, they won. Hermes won and was like, no, like, you can't these are do bags. that. Yeah, yeah, these are our bags, even if it's like a digital fucking, like, collectible, like, whatever. And yeah. so I and think... they're making money off of them. They're selling them in yeah. the digital world. That doesn't mean you <laughs> We can... should have asked our lawyer about that one. <laughs> yeah, we should have. <laughs> but, but, like, I feel like it's... it's Those are the kinds of things that at least fashion brands, like, all these people that have just, like, this huge IP you know, like, I guess, like, artists and stuff, like, you're going to start to see more of these presidents being set because, you know, it is your IP. Yeah, and I think that's what things get really interesting. Dude, fuck Jerry. Didn't you see that, like, um, meme? That they're, like, they're suing. What has he done? Fuck Jerry. Nothing, everything, anything <laughs> wrong in my mind. <laughs> no, but fuck Jerry's actually suing all these, like, different, like, brands that have, like, copied their meme templates. That's oh actually very interesting. Did you see Whoa, guys see that? I have not so seen that. They, they, they copied the memes that they stole from other people? Yeah, <laughs> how did they fucking do that? A meme, a, a meme template? Yeah, so, like, they're basically arguing, like, they, they have, like, these memes are basically, like, templates. And so, mm. like, they're, like, IP and um they were like yeah all these like brands have been like ripping off like our meme templates that's ridiculous well hopefully they can bring those meme templates back for fire festival too <laughs> 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 fucking billy mcfarland announced this week. oh that was a great segue yeah 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 uh, uh our, our boy billy's back Billy's out of jail, and uh, he announced on Twitter that it's going to be making uh, Fire Festival 2 is in the works, and uh, it's really happening. And uh, he said uh, something like, tell me why you should be invited, which is like such a fault. Like, yeah. Call for engagement. Andrea, okay. why should you be invited yeah, to Fire Festival 2? <laughs> Honestly, like it, I'd be definitely um, bringing in worst. Uh, I, I'd literally curate like the worst like snack uh, brands possible just to snack do, sommelier but the do, opposite but the opposite just like do one off like the little bread with the lettuce that they had last year yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you could add a lot of value to the fire festival too yeah. you can make sure people aren't eating cheese yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah snacks 10 you know <laughs> snacks uh, activation I, I everything that the snack insider recommends i'd bring yeah sour patch kids <laughs> Triscuits, <laughs> Triscuits, Tate's cookies, you know, the fucking vibes. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I knew that Billy was going to get out of jail and he was just going to get right back on his bullshit. And I just fucking salute that man. I mean, know? it took him a couple yeah. weeks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at Anna Delvey. Like, she's making a whole, like, reality show. Yeah, which is sad to say, but like, you know, infamy is uh, the new hot trend. You know? yeah. So I think what we should actually be doing, Andre, is trying to figure out a way that we can start conning and scamming people. Yeah. So villain. That, She's in the villain mode. Yeah, villain mode. I'm, I'm in my villain era. <laughs> you know, I'm gonna, like yeah. literally going to be like, don't like at this point, like, I, don't fuck with me. That's right. <laughs> no, I, um, did you see that Billy McFarlane on Twitter? He said, like, I'm looking for a deck. Like, I 
needed help with the designer. <laughs> that shit, like, I love that so much. I just feel like new oh, client alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it, that would be iconic. I thought about center it. Center design, because I, 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 I will. I'm one to maybe sometimes do things for the story of it. Yeah. So, why not? Yeah. yeah. I it's mean, like listen. Why not? The That's mischiefication funny. of of an agency that would yeah. be so fucking funny. I just want to. I just want to be in a meeting with Billy, and I just want to be like, "Hey, I got these ideas." You and, should make one. I, I well, just Alex, tweeted. We can. We can. We can get, get an a, hour for what, like two k? I'm trying to get him on the pod. I feel like that would be a, a, yeah. a huge, huge, huge get. Um, <laughs> I just again, I, th- I think he's. Uh, I think he knows what he's doing. I think he's very smart. Uh, he's, duh, a complete, yeah. Maybe. he's a complete con artist and a, and a scammer. Con, con, er, con artists are going to, you know, con. Yeah, that's, yeah, literally that's what con's going to con. But <laughs> I, I think I, I'll be watching this closely. I think if he could turn Fire Festival into a very legitimate brand and a very legitimate concert experience uh, festival. They just have to partner with Liquid Death, you know, like that way, like, that's you know, they, uh, water. Nobody, uh, yes. nobody would have to like give fellatio in exchange that's right. for water yeah, yeah. like they did. Yeah, he's <laughs> you know? good. Yeah. Whatever it takes. What's, what was that guy's name? <laughs> Andy, Andy King. Andy, shout out to fucking Andy King. What an f- <laughs> absolute legend. Yeah. We just need Pablo Escobar's former villa um, and uh, private island in the Bahamas, Kendall Jenner, Emily Ratajkowski, fucking Bella Hadid. Uh, Firefest 2 on uh, Jeffrey Epstein's island. Let's make it happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all going to be it's all, it's sponsored all, by Liquid Death. <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's all, it's all turning up Billy. That's all I said. People would be going crazy if that was the case. Seriously, yeah. though. If it was sponsored by Liquid Death, I'm pretty sure that that that's all it needs to happen yeah like, fraud fest <laughs> just fucking i mean if you made a if you lean into it and like lean into the memeiness of what happened and like totally. what's gonna be like i think it would sell i'm I interested think, i think people would do it for the merch right or they yeah. show up they're looking for a fire festival shirt and like I, I think there's a way to do this and i think uh we'll see if he does it i right. feel like if you were to make a fast where it's like you just go and like you you have that little scan thingy and you scan things but you don't get anything in return and you're literally the experience of getting scammed i think that's a very 2023 thing it's like yeah, yeah i just paid mm. to have the experience of things scammed. maybe it just shouldn't be on an island maybe the logistics might work out a little bit better if it's like yeah you don't know, have at, it on a fucking private island yeah maybe, maybe no if airports. it's at like randall's island <laughs> that's good yeah 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 an <laughs> island that literally you can get to from a, from an uber a private island for the day <laughs> no i think you're right i think that some of the logistics uh, again uh, fire festival was so close to being yeah, great billy you know? reach out let's make billy yeah we got ideas um okay uh moving on um fanta this story comes to die line to die line the best stories in packaging news and all those other things that you love uh fanta's back uh, they unveiled a brand new sort of global rebrand uh, designed by Jones Richie, Ritchie. And um, yeah, it's got a fucking huge army of creatives. Uh, JKR, as I said, on packaging imagery, Brazilian artist Lucas Wakamatsu on illustrations, motion identity from Gretel, Califon on typography, Tim Marcella on the photography, and Martin Wanacock on the product photography. That is a whole ton of people. But Ultimately, I think they've created a really nice rebrand for Fanta. It has a uh, really exciting color palette. It's bold. It's fun. It's, it's Gen graphic, Z adorable, and it's Gen <laughs> Z adorable. Yeah, they literally like that's so funny because like that's the aesthetic they went for. Like similar to what Starry that mm. like yeah yeah they're it, just trying to you know appeal to the youth. Gen Z loves soda too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. I actually really like the packaging. I think they did a really nice job. I I think it's it's clean, minimal, and also feels fun and bold. Um, because I remember back, uh, there was a global identity for Fanta that was done a couple of years ago by an agency called Koto, and it sort of looked somewhat like this, mm-hmm. and it was sort of had this like cutout feeling. But mm-hmm. in America, they had a different Fanta brand, and so this was sort of like the global brand and the American brand weren't exactly the same. And so what they've done here is they've taken kind of the global brand and they've taken some of the pieces of the American brand and sort of created a new sort of global identity for uh, the brand for everywhere. I'm going to be honest, I never really drank a ton of Fanta. That wasn't really my brand of choice. I feel like the Fanta in Latin America is like legit. Like yeah. That's right. I feel like all the sodas in Latin America just tend to hit better just because like they don't have like disgusting. Probably have like, like real sugar. Yeah, hundred percent. Because like I really like the orange Fanta. I don't drink yeah. it anymore, but like I remember as a kid, like it was like top tier. Yeah, like, somebody on brand new put a um, USA orange and a global orange, and the USA orange was like bright, bright orange. It was like neon, it was radioactive. <laughs> Where the uh, global orange looked maybe a little bit more like an orange juice. Yeah, 
No, but um, I think it's so funny because like all these, why is everybody, it's like they're all going through the knife, right? Under the knife. So like all these like legacy brands are getting like these like Botox filler here, like, you know, eye lift, like they're literally getting the buccal fat removed. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think it's all very much <clears throat> because like our generation made <clears throat> food and beverage like an external signaler in the same way of fa as fashion items. I've actually written about this very extensively. Um, in like, for example, like in, in South Korea, I love this trend of guys like girls and guys like just like like going out with a cereal box as an accessory. And I oh, actually yeah. saw that yesterday with uh someone with like something like joey joe o's or something like that this like cereal but it looked really cool and i was like wow that's the first time i see that do you think they like, were signaling or do you think they just didn't want to pay the five cents for a bag no because they were carrying a bag but they were Ooh. like holding the the cereal box here so it's kind of like i don't know it looks really have cereal cool. in it yeah it was like you could tell it was like an unopened box of cereal and that's like how like in south korea they'll do it with like a kellogg's like an average fucking cereal but it's like this like big box i don't know it just what would you cool. walk around with a hundred percent like if, if off limits did like a bigger one i love their boxes um i mm -hmm. walk around with that um we're more magic spoon company around here shout out to fucking magic spoon i'm i'm taking uh captain crunch i stay with the cat mommy captain crunch speaking of that they need kind of like a, a facelift speaking no. of brands nope. i need colorado us. we're <laughs> no, ready they we're do ready. not they do not need do not touch captain crunch <laughs> <laughs> we do skin tightening we do brow lifts no. we do uh yeah no. uh, buccal bu fat whatever that fucking hands is. off my cat yeah 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 <laughs> wait but we sell those epic we do it all around here <laughs> going back to fanta though i well like, yeah going back to that i feel like you know it used to not be a thing where you would be posting a picture of like your soda yeah. like as like a way of like signaling and it's like funny because like beverage itself has become a thing that people want to post about that identify like there's the beverage girlies there's the beverage goblins you Hell know yeah that's um, awesome. I don't know if you guys have seen <laughs> the beverage goblin meme. No, what do they do? Um, it's like it's a song that's like beverage goblins need at least three drinks. One to keep uh, like it's like a song, got it's, it. but it's become like an actual like meme. Got and it. so it's just like if you just like Google or like just like look on Instagram or TikTok beverage goblin, like you'll see everybody yeah. like using that little song and it's Say like goblin mode. Yeah, the energy, the water, and like the fun beverage. Sick. And the concept of fun beverage, like in that, I feel like they've starting to pick up like, oh, you know, like the actual can as a signaler actually matters, which yes. is for every agency. It's like their dream come true. It's like, oh yeah, I get to. This look. is great. Yeah. yeah. No, I, 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 we've been talking about this for years. And I, think I can see really Alex important. salivating on like all the <laughs> potential I mean, look, pitches. You know? <laughs> look at all of our brands. Our brands are signals. And I think it's because people are brands and they want to be seen with things that make them look cooler. And it's just like to a certain extent like wearing like you, you said like growing up like wearing cool clothes wearing cool logos on your shirt wearing cool like jackets or hats or things like that it's like you show up to someone's house or you, you're online with a beverage with a box of cereal whatever it is it says something about you and it's part of a lifestyle and it's part of a, uh, an identity it's like andy warhol's dream come true of making like a campbell soup like a thing also because it's like it's very affordable like we said yeah. like the richest person in the world drinks coke and the so yeah. does the poorest and i yeah. think it's like you can can have something that's not like an Ame Leon Dior fucking New Balance sneaker for four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. You can go to your local Target or Walmart and buy uh, a can of United Sodas of America, the best soda <laughs> in the world, and you could be, uh, you know, you, you know, be, Penelope. You uh, could be part of the cool kid gang yeah, that drinks soda. Penelope has, Kardashian posted about it once on TikTok. She, she did. That's my girl. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, it is. Yeah. Uh, it <laughs> is kind of like a, a, you know, a signaler for these like new generations. And and I think that's what's so exciting about what we do is trying to create these brands that are more than just products. And I think that's what, you know, that's the power of branding in general. But I think the fact that the snacks world with an X uh, owned by Andrea <laughs> is thriving. Like literally you go across the street here to, you know, sort of big night and you see just yeah. like the world of Snackshot in real life. Yeah. Uh, I do feel like you've been a huge part of sort of bringing all of that to our attention and being like, these are the new brands. We called the new it revolution. in 2020. We exactly. said it. We said it. Snack as a signal or curation as a service. SAS is the new SAS. I, I've been saying it. SAS is the new SAS. I don't get the credit for it. You but... call it SAS is the new ass. <laughs> 
<laughs> I've been saying curation is a service because I think you just yeah. you see that in my brain, and it's true because you could go to a regular supermarket. There's a million brands, and you're trying to find the five that you know sort of yeah. uh, identify with you. Yeah. Or you can go to Pop Up Grocer, uh, a plug for uh, you know sort of uh, <laughs> Emily, right? And 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 the event uh, tomorrow. That, yeah, uh, I will not be at unfortunately, but um, my invite must have got lost in the mail. Those stores, yeah. Do the work for you. You just walk inside. You're like, I want everything. Similar to a fashion store, like exactly. the Kith or like any I, other I store. I call it pantry kits. Yeah, like literally, these are like where you want to have like these like pl- even the placement of it. Like your regular grocery store is like all these like items shoved next to each other, and then like in pop up grocery, you see it's like all like you know there's space in between. Yeah, it makes you beautiful. feel like you're in a department store, and like it's an experiential type of uh, experiential grocer. Um, and actually wrote about this trend that's not just in the us uh you know the pantry kits exist like in london in australia like you see them popping up mexico Mm -hmm. city etc it's like literally everywhere and it's in it's also like stemming from that like um two things two things right like legacy like like traditional grocers operate on like legacy can have the most and the best spaces because they can pay for it right it's like really like a pay-to-play kind of thing and so like they have the best real estate and the way that grocery stores are designed are trying to trick you like the most essential things are in the back of it so like everything that has been like everything has been planned on like what they want you to grab like before you enter the store and then with these like curated grocers there's like a lot more of like the experience of discovery at a time where there's so much influx of products right like go to like did you not see my meme where it's like capitalism breeds innovation oh, yeah <laughs> it's like course. a shit That's time a people are sending that to me <laughs> And I was like, I, I know, I know, I know, Andrea, uh, I know, I know, sex shot. I'm, I'm, I'm certainly following it. Uh, yeah, he's he's Alex uh, certified. Alex and Kevin have been OG snack boys. Thank you. You know, yeah, for, uh, for a long before time. it was cool. Thank you. Yeah, and and because we do love <laughs> snacks in the same you know sort of way, and yeah. it's like I know. we just start studying. <laughs> you know, we'd be eaten. Yeah, we we we'd be eaten, and also just like you know, I love those images when you show like the Erewhon beverage aisle, and in my brain, I'm like, how many of those are our brands? You know, because <laughs> I can tell like a surely bit. not enough. Yeah, not no way. You need more. Yeah, um, yum, 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 yum. but but yeah, it's like it's so funny because like um even Erewhon beverage aisles like have become saturated, and like these like tiny curated grocers offer that like better like more pristine more sure. again department store type of elevation of uh the the grocery experience but it, it's so funny because like if you think erewhon's expensive go to juice star grocer in la like that shit's like yeah. it that literally feels like you just entered like you know gwyneth paltrow's like they you put know, the pantry they put the pantries on a pedestal yeah, <laughs> yeah and i joke like you know pantry items want to be seen but it's really like it, it is kind of like a, a generational thing so like i remember when i was writing about this like looking into like the data like pinterest put out there like oh you know like all these people People are looking for like um makeovers in their kitchen and what are they makeovering the most it's like their pantries and their shelves and they're like opting for open bare shelves and like wait so like why don't you go for cabinets anymore and it's because people want to be able to post their pictures and Oof. have people see like you know their grasa bottles uh their fermented organic dark horse, horse ketchup yeah. you know <laughs> the woolly mammoth meatball <laughs> That's what they. Uh, you know, yeah, I don't think you fridge. would have that in like, that's a in the pantry. Fridge. That's, that's in, in the fridge, fridge for uh, sure. That's yeah. like 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 that's op- like occupying for sure. Like probably like one quarter of your fridge. Yeah. So uh, for those that don't know, a mammoth meatball has been created by and cultivated by a meat company. Um, what is the name of the company? Do I think we have it's called that? like Vow V O W V O W. Right. Yeah. I know about an Australian company, company <laughs> is taking a different approach to culture meat. The first cultivated meat to be sold in diners uh, will be Japanese quail, which the company expects will be in restaurants in Singapore this year. Uh, we, so fucking we have dumb. a quote. We have a behavior change problem when it comes to meat consumption, said George uh, Papau, CEO of Vow. The goal is to transition a few billion meat eaters away from being. Uh, conventional animal protein to eating things that can be produced in electrified systems. I don't know. Just eat fucking beans. Yeah. Jesus just Christ. Eat beans or nuts or <sighs> vegetables or mushrooms. Like, do we have to make woolly mammoth meatballs? Absolutely. It's, Andrea? Uh, it's the cap. It's the innovation we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Well, I'm so first of all, this is not the first time this company triggers me because when I first like uh, came across it, when I was writing about brave, the brave new alt world, mm-hmm. I was like, well, do we really need like fake zebra meat? I don't get, like, I don't get it. Like, this is why nobody takes these companies like 
seriously as they should because you're out here with like the latest tech like raising millions and you're like you want to draw attention by making like a fucking mammoth meat- meatball like i don't i can't take you seriously i feel like yeah. you know and if you look at it like beyond me like all these like they're struggling so hard to get like that mainstream mass market appeal and they're like having to you know do all these like layoffs and cut like beyond me like since it ipo it went down like 98 percent of its value because well, the guy bit that other guy's nose off you know yeah, that was so yeah, funny dude that me. was so <laughs> fucking funny um but <laughs> this is why you don't hire a tyson employees for your plant-based yeah. alternative isn't it tyson he I don't was wanna, I don't no step out no no line, no he he, he was, was an ex-tyson employee but yeah. isn't like beyond meat kind of tyson no because but he left tyson and went no to i know beyond but meat. isn't it like under tyson I don't know. Is that true? Andre no, would be no, the one no, to know. No, I don't no. think that. No, no, no. no. They, I, they, they wouldn't be able to like, they their valuation at that time, like they didn't get bought out. That's why they IPO. So like they're a okay. standalone company, but that's worth almost nothing now. Um, but they have been, they've been struggling for a while. But that's why people don't take them seriously. Like, what? Like, that, I just feel like it's so stupid. Like, no, I don't want your fucking all giraffe meat. Mm. First of all, who the fuck is eating that in the first place? Like, how does that? This is not changing the world. Like, like this no. is why our I I'm like okay. This is why sometimes I believe like yeah th- we should be you know rotting. Like, why would we <laughs> as a like you hum- like a human race like the fact that we have all this technology and this is what you decide to do? That's fair. Like it's. Just just really like it's just really triggering to me and that's why like i'll get into conversations with people like on like like all like where i stand with all me and i'm like yeah we should maybe reduce our consumerism like of like meat whatever but mm-hmm. also like you can't expect me to go and talk to people in indigenous communities who use the product like you know they're not wasteful at all and be like sh- like shelling them like eat this lab based woolly mammoth, mammoth. yeah they're, be like get the created fuck out of here. in a lab <laughs> yeah i mean it's only really supposed to take some of the environmental impact off of factory farming we made we made almond milk unsustainable like that's how much i mean almonds are just kind of unsustainable themselves but but that's what i'm saying then it was supposed to be like an alternative to big dairy so i don't know the water use on almond milk is crazy these things also like especially like the woolly mammoth and the quail and the the kangaroo milk or whatever it just all feels like stunts that are just meant to sort of just get someone uh to talk about on their podcast or uh pay attention to it but (laughs) trigger me but (laughs) and to trigger on purposely trigger yeah yeah like uh palo santo water (laughs) but I i do think you know it's funny like you know what just came to mind was like in fashion, this used to be a thing as well, like where they'd be like, this Japanese raw denim was dried in space and, you know, oh, sort yeah. of, you know, and I think that was kind of like a thing that was um, kind of about <laughs> fashion was like kind of trying to uh, create the craziest, weirdest yeah. denim or whatever. And it's just like now that has come to sort of alt foods and packaged foods. It's like how bizarrely strange can we make it so that people pay attention to it? Or yeah. think it's special. Yeah. We we thought that in 2023, we'd have like, you know, living in like space or doing flying like, cars. like flying cars. And it's like, <laughs> meanwhile, Molly Mammoth Molly meat. Mammoth. that's a good meat. How do they yeah, even know yeah. what it tastes like? Yeah. Yeah. yeah good they question. Added, like yeah. some extra spices in there. I don't like, what are they doing? Yeah. Like, I just feel like also it's like, just like they probably just enlarged it. Like I call bluff in this. Like who, who, who can tell me? But the photo looks so cool because it's just a stone so, with a little bit so of. Uh, what are these? The size of basketballs? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of labna on it, and uh, yeah, this woolen <laughs> mammoth. Thing. I wish they were this. Like, it's not even that big. That's why I'm just like, wait, that's just like, I don't know. It just, ugh, it's it's not even like a well done stunt. I feel like it, on top of that, I like, like how they really prioritize the art direction, though. For me, with that's the what, smoke and everything, <laughs> yeah, 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 fucking chef's table. Yeah, oh, they, got, just, they got their uh, heads in the right. God, place. I wish I could have a time machine and see like Neanderthals, like just looking at us, like pla- plating the woolly mammoth meatball. <laughs> like, oh, they, the they did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they definitely did that. They definitely plated it like that, and oh, then they yeah. had the sauce. On the they side. chopped it up and made it into meatballs, <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. and then they plated it on stone with like the oh. little drop of yeah. of sauce. Yeah. Yeah, a verbal <laughs> meme. It's like the future we wanted. It's like Jetsons cars, and the future we got. It's just like a woolly mammoth. Yeah, meatball there's actually uh, cave drawings of woolly mammoth meatballs yeah. plated on stone. Yeah, so. alt meat. Yeah. yeah, on stone, uh, with a little bit of smoke, just so that it looks like <laughs> Chef's Table on Netflix. I mean, it's insane, but it, it is. It is. It does grab my attention. I'm always like, what the hell? They made meat out of this, or they're making meat that tastes like this. But I guess when it's alt meat, you could do basically anything. Um, uh, we got to move on to the uh, most important thing that has ever happened to planet earth 
It's the Barbie movie. <laughs> oh God! And I, Andrea, are you? You're already sick of this. I'm you're already so, so sick of it. It's I'm, been out for one week. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm super excited about the movie, even though like I was like laughing watching. Uh, I was reading this article where it's like everybody's shedding on why Ryan Ryan Reynolds is too old to too play old. Ken. Yeah, I thought that was. <laughs> That's like, like ageist. It was, it's just like the ma- makeup made the wrinkles just like look a little bit too much. But leave Ryan Gosling. Leave, That's leave him alone. Yeah. yeah, yeah, leave, yeah. leave him alone. Take I'm, out your anger on Ryan Reynolds. He deserves it. <laughs> Ryan Gosling. Oh shit, Ryan Gosling. Ryan yeah, Gosling. Ryan Gosling was I mean, like, they're pretty much the he same person. Absolutely not. He didn't deserve that. But <laughs> yes. um I I'm I'm super excited about like the whole movie. I just like the meme template when it gets just so overly like done. So if you are living under a rock and you didn't see, Barbie <laughs> is a new movie that Greta Gerwig is directing and it looks fucking awesome. Like it just looks visually stunning. Mm-hmm. It looks super bold and colorful and amazing. And they put out, I guess, the first real trailer for the movie uh, since they've been sort of teasing it. It's coming out July, uh, which is not too far away. And I guess as part of this, they introduced the full cast, which I guess before we had known that it was going to be uh, Ryan Gosling and we knew it was going to be Margot Robbie, but we didn't know that like who else was going to be in the movie. And so the other people in the film are basically like everyone. It's like Issa Rae, it's Kate McKinnon, it's uh, Will Ferrell, it's Michael Sarah, it's like a it Dua everybody, Lipa. Everybody. And so the, the way that they put out the movie uh, cast was they created these kind of like images where they would just sort of appear in sort of a Barbie-esque shape. And an Instagram lockup. And an Instagram lockup in a square that was very easy to replicate. And I think they obviously knew that people were going to take to this and kind of create their own. Each person has a tagline, like, this Barbie is this. He's a Ken, too. He's a Ken, yeah. And so I think before they actually released the product, I saw people were actually making their own versions of them in Photoshop just right off the bat, like instantly, or it was like, I'm going to put my own picture. Mm-hmm. Pre AI generator. Pre AI generator. I saw wow. one that was like someone actually, a designer took the time to I make know. it. I know they made a template, but and then all of a sudden pre? they put out their own version mm-hmm. pretty instantly. I would say within 24 yeah, hours. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I don't know. I, I Maybe it not, pre. but I, and then, so it was ba- ba- uh, barbieselfie.ai or whatever, and all you have to do is take a photo, upload it, and then you can put in your tat- uh, catchphrase and make an image. And this worked like a fucking charm. Like, this totally took, I think, everyone was making them. Brands were putting their own things mm-hmm. in them, which is the most nauseating part. Well, but, like, yeah. it became something that was so quickly It's generated. a meme, you know? That's why. Yeah. And I guess this is why I thought it was so brilliant. It's like, yeah, we've seen companies try to create memes for their movies i think there was that netflix like uh movie where it was like bird box or whatever where they had Mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. something was tied around sandra bullock's head because she couldn't see and they were talking about how they used memes to sort of generate buzz and talk about this movie right and i think the whole thing was that was like is, is that real or is that not real i think what i like about this was like they weren't trying to hide it they were like this is a meme Mm -hmm. here's how to make your own Mm -hmm. go and and if it's good enough and the design is smart enough and it's well crafted enough, obviously this is a big movie and and, and seems like a lot of people are excited about it. But it, it just it, it is a new way of marketing, in my opinion. And I think we have seen a little bit of this in the past. But I remember when uh, Straight Out of Compton did it. They did like Straight Out of, and then you can put your own hometown and you can kind of generate a similar thing. And that was like ten years ago, though. So it's like there hasn't been that many of these things really generated. And I guess the question is like, is this is this going to be sort of how every movie gets marketed, or is this something that we're going to tr- try to see a lot of? Because I feel like that is going to happen here. Yeah, I mean, I told you this earlier. I feel like in twenty twenty three, like you have to have like the CMO, which is like the chief meme officer. Like yeah, that's Kevin. Memes, yeah, memes <laughs> are just a way like. But they also, that's why, like, I feel like you do have to have someone that really knows how to use them in, like, a good context because they can become very cringe, too, Correct. right? Or you could get in legal trouble, like, with Fuck Dare You and that, like, sign guy that a lot of brands use, that, like, guy with the cardboard yes, sign, whatever. Sign guy. But I think with Barbie, the movie, it was, it it's that, like... Um, it hit well because it's, like, she's everything, he's just can't. Like, things like that that made it, like very memeable yeah and i think it was to your point it's like it has to be done well yeah and you have to have someone that's like knows internet culture enough to know that like it can't be too complicated yeah it has to be sort of something that you can kind of put your own personality into right because you can upload a photo but you can also put in that sort of catchphrase or something that 
I mean, people are narcissists. Let's just start there. So it's like, this movie's great, but how can I make this movie about me? A good meme needs to be able to be remixed. Correct. You know, like even with like TikTok and stuff, I feel like TikTok, Reels, whatever, like I feel like if you're able to grab someone like that they're able to remix it to Mm -hmm. add their own context, I feel like that's when you know you've made like a fun meme. Yeah, and I agree with you that it has to be, um, you have to be smart about it because I do think it can come off really cringy and can come, can totally backfire on you and be like, look at this like movie or whatever, like trying too hard to try to be (laughs) internet cool. And I think it's, it, I think that maybe that's why companies maybe shy away from it because I think they, the, the, the repercussions of getting it wrong could be much more massive than getting it right. But I think this is a perfect example. It's like they nailed it. And yeah, of course, people are going to like be, you know, sick of it in a week, but that's just how culture is. And I think it generated so much more buzz for this movie. It generated so much more attention. And uh, yeah, give something that. Um, people and for free, right? For free, yeah. <laughs> you have to pay for a lot. We talk about you know snacks as a signal. It's like this is a signal that I am sort of into into know, it, internet culture yeah. for the week at least until something <laughs> else new comes along. And Barbie, you know, is like a cool thing that is to your point nostalgia. And today sucks. Nostalgia so, is the opium of the masses. In absolutely. So, put that put that shit in my fucking veins. Yeah. <laughs> Were you a Barbie? Uh, oh, a hundred percent. It was yeah. so funny because like there's a scene where they're like, uh, the Ken is talking to the Barbie, like uh, Ryan uh, Gosling is talking to whatever yes. her name is, but they're like, yeah, I just feel like we should hang out, like to like stay over the night or whatever. And she's like, do you do what? Because like you know, like they don't <laughs> yeah, have yeah, any yeah, genitals. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's so funny because I I remember like first of all, my mom would be like, oh, I don't know if I should get her Kens, and I remember having to use my brother's like action figure <laughs> to like like marry the Barbie, but I obviously didn't know like. Like what like you know the act of sex was so i would just put them like on top of each other and mm-hmm. just like put them under the bed like if it was like a microwave just waiting for something to happen and then i would just take them out and then i just like would add the little the she has a sister like okay. so i would just like have the baby and be like oh yeah like they they were they like cooked and now the baby's <laughs> out like so i thought that scene was so like i was like wow that was literally what like yeah. you know when you were playing barbie you really didn't know because they didn't even have like like genitals and stuff so i thought it was so funny that scene really brought me back to my childhood of like yeah i know what <laughs> like what that is it was so funny but yeah it was a barbie i was obsessed with barbie i had all the mermaid one also brought me back like dua lipa being with the mermaid the shimmery thing that you actually put it on hot water and it would change color like yeah, yeah the nostalgia injected into my veins like it's fucking real yeah, yeah and, let's and, go and they and they are getting it right and yeah. i think that's the thing it's like greta gerwig and noah bombach like they're 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 not here to like you know, sort of do this in a hokey, cheesy, bad way. They're here to take some of those things that were part of culture and like yeah. reinvent them and reimagine them. And I think that's the answer to like tapping into that nostalgia. It's like you can do it, but you just can't put Barbie on something and think that people are going to go crazy for it. You have to do it this way, which is like get the details right, get the casting exactly. right, get the colors right, get the stories right. Like, yeah. And the idea that like all have the different professions, like the careers, like one is pres- this Barbie is a president, this sure. Barbie, that's that's also very much wow. That's you had all the different type of Barbies. But then some I read this tw- tweet that I thought was so funny, like someone said, Greta Gerwig's like Barbie is gonna be um, Pinocchio meets Don't Worry Darling and I thought that was so fucking accurate like, yeah well and, and I think I also saw people were noticing that like when Ryan was like he grabbed it she was like did you grab your roller skates and then they took out the roller skates yeah. and they were like a perfect replica of uh, yeah, the original with like, like the skates. neon skates and stuff yeah. yeah and people are gonna pause those things and like call them yeah. out and use them for fucking social media and like oh share the, them. the memes coming out of this movie are gonna yeah. be another hit like yeah the visuals for it are just so on point yeah so what do Absolutely. we think this yeah i i, I guess I, I do think because this is going to work and because it's going to create such a buzz around this film and because it's going to ultimately lead to box office sales i would imagine and dollars and yeah i just i see this kind of in the same way like you know with with you know as we talk about snacks and drinks and all these things like how do you give that because I think movies are in a weird spot, right? Because you can just watch them from your home. I, yeah. I was I was kind of looking. I want to see that Nike movie about the sort of origins of uh, the, oh, the, yeah. the, the Jordan. Air. I just don't Air. like it's Ben Affleck. It's like, yeah. Eh. I know. The, that marketing boss. that marketing looks is is terrible. Like that's the complete opposite. It's like you have like a really great topic. Like obviously mm-hmm. sneaker culture is still mm-hmm. huge. And 
like the market in the movie, I was like, where do I even watch this? Yeah. And it's like, why is it look so shitty? And yeah. like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just like, it could have been cool and interesting. And I just don't think like two movies about sort of something nostalgic yeah. for all kids that yeah. grew up in the nineties, eighties and you know, even two thousands. Like you're right. And, and so you have Barbie over here, absolutely nailing all the details, getting everything right, tapping in, leveraging it, modernizing it. And this other movie called air, is that what it's called? Air. Yeah. And it just looks like, Ben Affleck and fucking Matt Damon. I'm fucking, made- I'm fucking Phil Knight. <laughs> dude, it's just like, bad. do I have to like watch another Matt Damon, Ben Affleck movie, dude? <laughs> yeah. And are they going to be doing, is the Nike founder Boston or whatever? Are they going to be doing their like uh, yeah, yeah. asshole accents? Like, I I'm just so over so. it. <laughs> Park the Nikes by Harvard Yard. You, know? <laughs> you got me <laughs> fucked up if you yeah. think I'm not going to be at the theater with a Palo Santo yeah, water yeah. and a <laughs> Woolly yeah. Mammoth meatball sub. <laughs> He's like the new Larry Bird, <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know why. Like, I don't want to see it's that so movie, cringe. even though it should. Yeah. Like, I read Phil Knight's book. Like, I yeah. obviously care about this. Like, this story. It's a great story, and I, apparently the, the movie the is good. What's the studio? I couldn't have? tell you. No. And I, I looked it up. I was like, how do I watch this? And it was like theaters. I was like, ugh. <laughs> I gotta go. To fucking, you mean I can't fucking stream out? <laughs> I, I gotta go to a movie I mean, you theater. Could. I mean, you I'm sure you, you could if you're resourceful. I was like, but we don't steal, Kevin. We do not condone <laughs> no. uh, out there. You should not download. I can this just imagine and Kevin. Send me a link. Uh, do not do that. When your cable company tells you to cease and desist, you better <laughs> cease and desist. Cease yes, and desist. You stop. That. You better stop streaming. And I, don't send me a link, please. Do not. Whatever you do, do not. Kevin trying to sneak in the woolly mammoth like meatball into meatball the theater. Into the theater. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a big plate of spaghetti. Yeah, that's why. That's why meatballs. I wear big ass pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Jinkos! Like, wait, I saw the best fucking video. It's like this account from this guy. Speaking of nostalgia, it's this guy who looks like a very older millennial, um, and he's always like shirtless, like um, roller skating at the park. And there's like this oh, yeah, hardcore, that guy rules. yeah, the one who is like the Linking Park, like, and he's like skating down a mountain and like Linking Park. It's like a, a rail or something. Linking Park's just like blast. He's wearing like these jinkos with like flames at oh, the bottom. Yeah. It's yeah, they go hard. That ver- like that brought me back to like 1998, like so bad. And like he's wearing like the the little like uh, shell yeah. like chokers. That was my childhood. Yeah. I wore jinkos uh, <laughs> extensively. I had many pairs. <laughs> I had ones that were 26 inches wide around the, <laughs> wow. the, around the sort of uh, leg pants, uh, the pant legs. And uh, they had like a big graphic on the back. Bring and it back. I had the puka shell necklace. I had it all. Yeah. yeah my, I was that kid. My favorite meme about that, like now that the generation's bringing it, this generation's bringing it back, like Gen Z or whatever. Yeah. My favorite meme is like, you never experienced this feeling. And it was like when your <laughs> flare jeans would get wet, dude, and you had to oh. like, like roll them up because they were so heavy yo yeah. i see people in new york rocking like just these huge pants that are touching the ground like they yeah. are dirty from being yeah. drug under their feet all yeah. day and i want to throw up that's it's part nasty. of it that's part of the Think culture, about you, how much piss and shit are on those pants it's just yeah. i mean the city's nasty like, the, the nostalgia is a drug dude yeah I, le- I left the city for a couple of days and i came back yesterday and i was like man it does smell like just shit <laughs> everywhere. And I was like, just getting fresh air in Kentucky was like, wow, this this air here feels crisp and it smells good. How do you think I feel coming in from yeah. like tropical, beautiful oh, Honduras, setting, yeah. Honduras? And like, I come here and I'm like, why does it smell like pee everywhere? Because yeah. the, the, every, the dogs are literally no shitting on. <laughs> yeah, we just like, piss and shit on the floor. Yeah, That's what we dogs do. are pissing on the concrete. <laughs> Yeah, people, that's what we people did. are pissing on the concrete. Yeah. yeah, I feel bad for you guys. As soon as I like stepped out of that ferry and I saw that giant cost stadium statue, I'm like, oh yeah, there goes the neighborhood. <laughs> Goodbye, Greenpoint. You're, you're done for, dude. Wow, that's at the uh, yeah. How, how dare you talk about houses. my building <laughs> like that? <laughs> we, we, I love my cause sculpture. Wait, that's literally where you. <laughs> no, no. But I, I do live in a building very similar. <laughs> <laughs> I, S- sand I, cause yeah it doesn't have a cause sculpture but it's, it, it's the pretty, Williamsburg vacation of every fucking neighborhood around Brooklyn I actually looked at that building and literally <laughs> there was like two kids doing a photo shoot in front of the cause sculpture outside like oh my just God. Like, like one guy like getting real low <laughs> and I was like I can't live I don't know what you guys are talking about that's my mecca yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that yeah, I love yeah. cause yeah cause Anyway, um, well, well s- speaking of kids uh, and signaling, <laughs> uh, do you, are you have a big announcement? Um, or, or, uh, uh, yeah. No, I was gonna try to go into talking about Prime. <laughs> oh, talking about Prime. All right, last one. Okay, Prime. <laughs> you want to you want to kick it off? You're like announcement on. Do should we know about something? <laughs> <You're so bad. laughs> 
Creator packaged goods. Is I, I thought we were we were closing the show. Um, we'll take we'll take it to the we'll take it to the bridge. You ready? Creator packaged goods. Have you heard of this trend, Andrea? <laughs> You mean uh, coining it last year? Yeah. So oh, was that you? I thought that was us. <laughs> that was I'm us. Just kidding. Uh, let me let me mansplain it to you really quickly. <laughs> so there's this new wave of YouTubers. You know, people like uh, Logan Paul, Mr. Beast, KSI, uh, KSI, other people who I definitely know, Emma Chamberlain. Um, that's my list. <laughs> so these kids, mostly kids. Um, they have lots of views on their videos. <laughs> so what they're doing is instead of just because they have all these eyeballs and all this attention, <laughs> they're like, how do we monetize this inst- without just YouTube ads? <laughs> so they've got this brilliant idea, packaged goods. They can sell products <laughs> that they can sell in these stores. They call them grocery stores, sometimes <laughs> supermarkets. And they can sell these products to their fans for money. At a, at, for money. Oh, wow. Yeah. And uh, it's working. <laughs> Most notably, uh, Prime. So we got a t- real, real, real talk for a second. <clears throat> Prime said they're going to do $250 million in retail sales. They are going to, uh, they, they've, it's gotten to the point where like schools are banning Prime mm-hmm. and like kids are refilling bottles of Prime mm-hmm. with other products so they can seem cool. People are buying Prime on eBay. People are shipping Prime around the world because it's only sold in America. How the fuck did this happen? Yeah, it, well, it's so funny because um, the the Prime phenomenon is like, a good um example of what happens when a generation is like extremely digital so like obviously gen alpha born in 2010 so like you have the the rise of all these like digital platforms or parents you know had their accounts secured when they were babies whatever and like the rejection of just big things that are just digital and like they're yearning for something like a, a physical connection with these people that they see as celebrities, right? So we're talking about people who are growing up with YouTube as TV. So like the YouTube generation that I call, it's like for them, like building these relationships, like in the same way, like when we were like, I guess like younger, you would go and like to someone's concert or uh, get someone's autograph, whatever. I feel like these products are becoming that version for this generation that's like yearning kind of that connection with these like creators that they deem as like celebrities, whatever. And then as a way of like, for them, luxury is a sense of belonging, right? And like the same way that everybody, you know, wants to belong or be cool by buying certain fashion items or bags or whatever. I feel like this is kind of a similar sentiment, but, you know, in like a very, you know, a- a- affordable $2, I can find that at a Walmart or a C store or whatever. So, drink. so you're saying like instead of going to like a Backstreet Boys concert, <laughs> And getting a T-shirt and wearing around the Backstreet Boys shirt to tell other people that I love Backstreet Boys. Yeah, people are buying. That's that. a, that's an expensive proposition, yeah. right? You got to get tickets to a concert. Yeah. You got to buy the fifty dollars mm-hmm. shirt, and like that's that's quite an ordeal. You have to go to the show, etc. This is a way for people to tap into the celebrities of our time and the, the founders and the people that they sort of look up oh, to. Oh, their time, yeah, and sort of say, <laughs> "Cool, this is my." This is my band T-shirt. This yeah, is my exactly. Well, way of like, tapping but in. also like Emma Chamberlain is not a musician, right? So she's not doing concerts or meet and greets, and so like this is like a best way of having an extension of that, like like the, to be part of it. Yeah, to be part of it. So like the Chamberlain tote bags or like the coffee itself. It's like, oh yeah, you know, I'm a fan, and Correct. this is how I like support. Yeah. Um, and so I think like with Prime, they nailed their audience market fit. So like what is a product that would actually something that our our audience could really like resonate with? And if you look at like how he's turned himself into a wrestler and a- athletic and whatever. A and, mighty like, fine wrestler. Yeah. Honestly, good. like he, you know, he he makes the he knows how to make an audience work. Like even when you see him like wrestling and like and dude, like it's so fucking yeah, genius. He like comes out with like prime and stuff, and you know you and and it's such a Gen Alpha icon. Like you know who who has a better better tie with this generation, Gatorade or Prime, in terms of like you know a sports drink. A hundred percent would be Prime right now. The fact that you have like tastemakers of this generation 
generation, which are like the Penelope Kardashian, Northwest, like, you know, posing with, um, you know, Northwest posing with Prime is a big indication of like just how much of a of a challenger to a legacy this could if it is able to kind of like continue this momentum because of the relevancy of the generation like this generation doesn't give a shit about like a Gatorade in the same way that they are obsessed with Prime because of what it signals to them yeah. um, and so I think it's it's first of all the branding is pretty it's very minimal but it kind of hits you know like yeah when well, the first time I saw it it looked like something that does fit into sort of the new generation of snack and beverage you know identity which I think is important for it to not feel like Logan Paul's athletic drink. It feels like a brand that can stand on its on own, its own yeah. legs. And then he is just pumping it, like you said, into you know wrestling performances, all of his TikToks. They had a live ass prime mascot yeah. who was turned out to be KSI at WrestleMania who went through a fucking table. Yeah. Which is just like <laughs> That's and, and millions of people watch WrestleMania. Yeah. And I think the funny part is like you're like, oh my God, how'd they get in WrestleMania? It's like his views on his own TikToks and, and, and YouTube videos, whatever, like are probably triple what a mm-hmm. pay-per-view sort of like marquee event would be. And I was telling the team this morning, or not this morning, I was I was telling the team like a, a week or so ago about this TikTok that he put out that basically was just like, here's how I got like 50 million views on a stupid post that someone made. And it was mm-hmm. about how someone had taken one of his marketing images and made it very sexual. Mm-hmm. suggested and in Orlando, yeah, yeah, I saw. And that. then they basically took it. They sort of, uh, you know, they, he reposted it. Then KSI sort of tweeted like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah. And then they created their own cardboard version of it, put it in a store. Yeah. Then they filmed a reaction video, and they just like kind of took this one very like, yeah. you know, sort of a uh, random moment and just. Yeah, use the internet really, really, really fucking they, they well. They know how to wield the internet because that's literally where they created their, you know, their fame from. Totally. Logan Paul is like, no matter how many people shed on it or how many people like get triggered by like, what, why the fuck is he even famous? Like, you gotta give it to him. Like, he knows how to like make like even with the Super Bowl ad, there was a lot of criticism about how like plain it was. And I'm like, are you kidding me? That's like your typical YouTuber kind of template of a video mm-hmm. of like just yeah. like this like reel of all these like insane stunts that they've pulled yeah and you don't need to go get like why didn't kennedy to make some like multi-million dollar and- commercial about like how prime is from within you yeah know? exactly and it's like <laughs> they you, know you don't what, have to do that yeah they know their audience is not fucking tv it's literally these kids that are watching them on youtube and totally. i think that they they didn't really have to like you know buy that and i feel like it's such a big i got fuck you money type of vibe to be able to do like that super bowl ad and do it in that like such <coughs> minimal uh minimal way um yeah. and then even mr beast you know come put out like oh you know i was gonna spend seven million in a video but then i did this instead in classic mr beast manner but it's true though it's like why would he pay seven million dollars for a uh, commercial that will reach 70 million people on television when he literally has a YouTube <laughs> yeah. channel with 70 million views yeah. on every video that he makes. It yeah. doesn't make any sense. And I think both of these guys like are really smart at taking their content and like stretching it and getting the most out of it. And like that prime video that I was saying that like basically he was just like him talking about how good he is at using the internet yeah. for marketing. That video ha- itself has 7 million views. And then you look at sort of all the WrestleMania sort of post that one has 12.8 million views. So it's yeah. like, he's just constantly like, and he's taunting Gatorade. Like he does it. He's <laughs> like, yeah, we have more followers. We have a larger audience. And, and they gotta be shitting themselves. I bet. I oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Like I'm like first of all, like if there were, I'm pretty sure this this is gonna be a hype that leads them to some sort of exit for sure, where they both come out. I don't think they're gonna be stringing this forever. I'm pretty sure like this is gonna get them like uh, acquired, bought out, yeah. acquired a hundred percent. Um, and because I imagine Coke and Pepsi both are like, oh, there's prime. Th- like, what the hell do we do? It, it, they, they are probably the first brand that has nailed Gen Alpha and that's going to become a lot more important for legacy brands, but the way that they've done it, um, and you know, and I love studying the UGC of this brands because it's, for me, it's a better indication of, uh, what, how are people actually using this product? Like what, what is that the behavior that's like they use without like, what, like, a whatever the brand is trying to lead me to believe that their users use it for. So yeah. one of the things that I've seen is like, obviously the trade, the trade of, you know, trading prime, um, in between the way that these like small little leagues, they're all drinking prime. You don't see 
Gatorade there, like high school, even um, Prime as a mixer for like college parties and stuff. It's just crazy how how it's such a like how people are using it and in a way of replacement of what things like Gatorade, sure, um, even Red Bull have been you know because they have an energy drink now yeah and it's that same feeling i think and this is what we've been talking about you know and you've been talking about for years it's like that same feeling of being like oh i gotta wear that tommy hilfiger jacket yeah. you know what i mean oh, i have to have that polo on my shirt because it gives me a certain superpower it makes me feel like i'm a part of a lifestyle or i'm a part of a movement and it says something about me by wearing this brand and i think that's the exact same thing that people are having with prime which is like to show up to your high school or to show up at a, you know, sort of event or to film a video and to have it is to sort of, yeah, to be a part of something. But it's the reversal than... of uh, luxury, if you think about it. And that's why I like to say about uh, it's a, a form of affordable affluence because yeah. it's not something uber expensive that's like inattainable. It's something that you can literally get at a fucking gas station for two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. And but it has that same sex, like a sense of supreme type of kith type of a vibe which is going to be very interesting to see these creator brands um you know if they can grow and actually sustain that momentum and it's not just like a you know boom and bust type of thing yeah they also probably need to work on the beverages because they all seem to taste really bad why can't they get good like food <laughs> scientists like what's up with that i haven't tasted it actually but um it's, it's so funny that they they had to put an announcement saying like parents don't buy your kids a, like an energy drink because it's become like kids like, the, it has an insane amount of, of caffeine that's yeah, like 200 milligrams per <laughs> can like, that's, that's insane, insane. That's yeah crazy shit. you can't get that to kids yeah, exactly yeah. and so like that's why it's become banned in a lot, a lot of schools and they actually came out and say like hey like parents like we are not telling you to buy it to your kids but you think parents i've seen this is even funny like you even see like this is why i learned i love learning about the ugc like you see millennial parents who are like you know feeling guilty because they couldn't find like it's so funny to see them post about like oh i feel bad because i wasn't able to grab you know the latest drop like parents are going insane too like kids are driving them fucking insane wanting to get like all these primes and imagine like imagine like your kid nagging you like <laughs> to get like the fuck I, I i'm sorry i'd give my kid 200 milligrams of caffeine if he's been nagging me for fucking you know but to be honest <laughs> though, it's, like it it's, it worse. it's a lot it's a lot cheaper to your point though about then like getting them tickets to go see oh, you know yeah. taylor swift in concert it's going to cost you 800 dollars to sit in the fucking nose oh yeah like, to go order like a eight pack of prime on amazon it's going to cost you 45.95 which <laughs> does seem insane but even that <laughs> for is how many for an eight pack oh my god that's i was just wild. about to order it because i feel like we need to have it in the studio just to like you know this. Just no, but, it, we gotta yeah. study it but that's just in the u.s right but in the uk some of these retail for like hundred hundreds of dollars which is yeah. crazy but there's a whole black market for prime and i think n you've never seen a brand that's a year old be able to have this sort of mass hysteria around a totally. two dollar drink so like we just yeah. have to i i i'm first to always like give credit where credit's due even though like you know i find these youtubers like sometimes very cringy sure but this Ooh, guy is Paul? a no. <laughs> this guy's a fucking like marketing genius like and he's done it with like just leveraging his own audience like not yeah. even you know like how much money these like legacy brands are pummeling to not even come close to what prime is doing like it's yeah. crazy it's a big shift and i think these giant brands the mondelezes and the nestles and the, pay me sir, the for Hershey's. my for my insights well for i think sure. i think they're <laughs> snack daddy shaking in his boots <laughs> i think snack daddy is a little nervous right now because oh, for i sure. do think these brands are shaking shit up and i, th I if i know anything about giant corporations a trend is cool. They'll be like, oh, this brand is like kind of on the up and coming thing on the cusp. You start doing $250 million of mm -hmm. retail, you're not a little cute trend anymore. You're fucking taking market share away from some of these big brands. Ooh, yeah. And that's something that they're going to be uh, uh, more focused well, on is and figure, trying to figure out. Because it's not just like a new coming beverage that's yeah. like, you know, kind of changing things by putting sparkling water, yeah. you know. Uh, Prebiotics. Yeah, something. In, it's like, no, this is a movement and this is a sort of generation 
generational shift in the way that people are buying snacks and foods yeah. and beverages and 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 you are on the cusp of it all and uh, yeah i have like one last thing to yeah say about no no, that. no like yeah, don't off, under don't don't underestimate this brand it's like the emma chamberlain like she's not the one running the operation she actually got an ex red bull like top executive to help you know That's... run the brand uh feastables has an xrx bar person helping with the operations and prime has congo distributors who've done successfully you know have have scaled brands like alani and you know others in that same category and i feel like this is why they have the advantage and the upper hand is that they're so highly underestimated right now because people are not taking them seriously but they're you know they, they're they actually going about like talking to experts and using experts in the industry and not really like the fact that you think like oh yeah you're gonna be operating the business like you know i, I logan paul isn't like operating day-to-day <laughs> no. -day stuff and choosing no, like no. you know supply like, chain he, exactly like he's not he's just like the face and lending like his community and his audience and i think that's the biggest thing that they have going for them and like we can mock them and laugh all we want but like that they're they're, they're, they're laughing, laughing to, the to the bank like in in like in massive ways right so i just that's like my little last um commentary like if you're snack daddy uh you know call me uh yeah, instead, of, instead of appropriating from my content just you know give me a call I'll give you a good discount right like yeah you know no. it's a great it's a <laughs> great daddies, daddies don't get discounts oh, yeah, actually yeah. yeah like you guys got deep pockets don't be fucking cheap ass motherfuckers <laughs> like i'm gonna start like you know yeah. taking Taking all of them out of my my mm. my newsletter and just make them go hundred percent paid. Well, it's um, a it's a great point though because you you look at them from the outside and you're like, oh, this is sort of cute and novel. But you're right, like to make two hundred fifty million dollars worth of product. Let's just start there. The amount of supply chain expertise and the amount of sort of actual bottles and like distribution that you need to figure out is not fucking small. Like you have to have real fucking experts and real fucking heavy hitters behind the scenes. And these brands do. They're not like trying to figure out how they're going to make their next sort of batch of product. They have got that shit figured out. And that's a huge part of running a business. It's not just about sort of making a really cool brand. A huge part of it is obviously. And if you need to know and you're looking for a partner to do that, Center is the right per partner for you. <laughs> but like, I do think those two things go hand in hand. And it's like, it is easy to sort of like overlook them and be like, oh, look, yeah, they're doing, uh, that's a you know new brand from a YouTuber. But it's like, to have the sort of backing that you're talking about in terms of operations and sort of real supply chain expertise and to be able to make this amount of product and to get it out into these stores and to, and to put it, you know, in these people's hands is not easy, but they're making it look really easy. So don't underestimate them. And actually, you know, you got to start to rethink the way that you're doing things. And I think these giant companies, um, there is a shift coming. And I do think um, the first thing you need to do is subscribe to Snackshot. Like the first <laughs> thing, at the very least, like you should just be reading these amazing articles that you put out if, if for it, free yeah. to people. And maybe that's going to shift. But but, um, but because I do think you are on the uh, cutting edge of all of it, you um, are the first person to, to fill my brain up with knowledge um, because there's so much going on in all these different places and uh, no stone unturned with Andrea. <laughs> and so we're so thankful that you can come drop some knowledge on our show and uh, please continue to come back and fill us in on what the kids are doing and <laughs> how how all these brands are, are doing uh because it is again we've been talking about this for a couple of years as as we've been friends and i've been watching what you're doing and you've been on the show but it is it is it is absolutely <laughs> not going anywhere and it's also it's here right the revolution is kind of here where you're talking about sort of things you were talking about where you know sort of uh you know uh, curation as a service and creator packaged goods and um uh curation as a service sorry and it's like all these things that you've been talking about it's like now you can literally go to the pop-up grocer uh in in the west village or wherever it is and like see it in real life it's actually happening and you can go and buy these brands you know, what you're saying is that my predictions continue to be accurate. Uh, you're an oracle. A soothsayer. <laughs> a soothsayer. A snack seer. Snack seer. I was actually dubbed a snack seer uh, by Carson Cressley um, yeah. when I was doing a, a segment at Access Hollywood. So, yeah, the no. snack seer. Well, I guess also, you know, an oracle uh, <laughs> or a uh, sort of futurist is only as good as their sort of predictions. Um, if they come correct. So I'm here to uh, coronate uh, the queen and say, <laughs> no, all the things you've been talking about 
are are manifesting. Uh, they're all here, <laughs> and I guess um, I'm gonna uh, pick your brain off uh, off camera and off mic <laughs> to find out what's coming next, so that uh, we don't give that away for free. Well, um, I'm glad that you know we've had this conversation, and, and I'm str- I just want to say shout out Kevin for always being patient because we talked so much. I know, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, you guys are great. Uh, it's great content. All right. Well, I guess we're well. That's it. That's the show. Up. <laughs> well, because we 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 could keep going on, but uh, I know you could. Kevin doesn't want us to because he's looking at me saying, "Well, this comes out tomorrow. Cut so, this out. You know. Cut this tomorrow." Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'll see All you tomorrow. Right. Peace, peace, peace. Bye. <laughs>